Good morning, everyone. Hello there. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Welcome to our new lecture on SS31. This is still SS031, Understanding the Self. And this is Sir E, your online facilitator, your online instructor. And today, our discussion will be focusing on the digital self. I think this topic will be very much interesting for all of you, in particular, because this is the world that you are living in right now. And so welcome to our discussion today. This is the digital self, the virtual you, the self in the cyber space. Alex Gray once said that the infinite vibratory levels, the dimensions of interconnectedness are without end. There is nothing independent. All beings and things are residents in your awareness. The interconnectedness of people cannot be denied in this age of globalization where we live in a world without borders. And so today, Part of our understanding will be the following. Our first one, we will establish the nuances of the digital self. Also, we will elaborate on the abstractions one gets to experience when interacting with virtual technology. Also, we'll try to outline performance as an essential concept in digital identity formation. We will differentiate anonymity and pseudonymity, the online set. And also, we will examine the online disinhibition effect and the factors that causes it. We live in highly mediated times. When we say that we live in highly mediated times, there are many ways specifically where we can actually present ourselves to people around us, even without presenting the real us. That is what we mean when we say we live in highly mediated times. Expressions of identity nowadays involve layers of belief selves. We can present ourselves, the reality of ourselves, and even the unreality of who we are. This is what Kenneth Jurgen back in 1991 termed as multifrenia or the idea that countless alternatives to self-expression neuters identity formation, which means that the different uh, ways in order for us to express ourselves because of the different digital expressions, because of the different social media platforms that we have, somehow neuters our identity formation. And somehow there is a tendency for us to blur the lines between who we are and who we are presenting to be to those who are around us. People nowadays are more interconnected than at any point in history. In the digital revolution in full swing, the challenge to maintain a coherent sense of identity is prominent, particularly in an age where we can actually what? Okay, pwede natin the uh, adjust yung mga itsura natin sa, muka, sa, sa, sa ating mga pinipresent online. Okay? Now, how do you think can people maintain a cohesive sense of identity online? Let's talk about the other I, love in the time of social media. In this day and age, nothing beats falling in love with the boring bits cut out. Virtual romance speeds through moments and cuts to the chase. Falling in love sometimes could be possible by using different social media platforms. On your screen right now, you see Tinder. And I know of a friend who found her husband at the moment, okay, her husband on Tinder. And she's not ashamed of saying that she used Tinder in finding love because right now I know that she's happy. The way I see it right now is that they both are very happy. Now, virtual romance speeds through moments and cuts to the case although there are stories as well of uh unhappiness in finding love in in in, in a time of social media particularly uh, that we are living at a time of catfishing and when we talk about catfishing this is the act of luring someone into a largely virtual relationship the use of online alter egos and perhaps if you know of some people using alter egos in presenting themselves online and in finding relationships they're not able to present who they really are perhaps because they are afraid of being known of the reality of their personality and identity that's the reason why they are just luring people into a largely virtual relationship what is your opinion 
and on love in the cyberspace. Uh, honestly, I am not going to say that it is wrong, but we have to take much of a caution in finding love in the cyberspace. In particular, if we are not able to see the reality of who these people are. Now, let's talk about reality and reality as an abstraction. Now, given the pervasiveness of numerous reality simulations, abstraction is fast becoming a staple of modern human experience. When we speak of abstraction, this is the non-physical properties one can get or one gets to try and interact with when consuming technology. Now, when you talk about the non-physical properties, that means you are not really presenting the physical you, or people do not really see the real you, the, 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 uh, the, the reality of who you are, okay, in the physical sense of it. Now, according to Kimberly Rosenfeld, varying manifestations of abstraction can be mapped on a continuum, and this is continuum which, which you are seeing in your screen right now so here you will see the real life reality and then you have the simulation and augmented reality but these three are still part of the real life space okay and after that you will see the concept of abstraction and when we talk about abstraction again okay this is inclusive in the virtual space where we see virtual reality and the hyper reality. But what are these concepts? Now, let's look at reality as an abstraction first by trying to understand the definition of real life reality. Now, when we speak of real life reality, this is the reality with which you engage most frequently, including your, your physical being. And so people see your reactions, your uh, Nonverbal cues and whatnot, and it pertains to life away from digital devices. So this is the reality of who you re uh, really are in the material, in the physical world. This is what you call the real life reality. And then you have the concept of simulation, where each the basic purpose of what is to copy reality as closely as it can be. It offers uncanny representations of real world aspects. Okay, and this is somehow um, true in many of the games that we play online. And then you have the concept of augmented reality. This is real life reality spliced with the unreal. So this is quite a mixture of the real world and the unreal world where you try to permit to creatively interact with both the tangible, meaning the things that you can sense and the digital world often at the same time. Um, I remember there were there was a year when Pokemon was very much um, popular because of the augmented reality. Kung saan kumukuha ka ng mga uh, Pokemons, okay, pocket monsters in the unreal world. But this is actually an augmented reality. I think some of you uh, still are very much familiar. If you're going to look at your screen right now, this is very much depicting of the a kind of reality which is actually augmented. And then you have the concept of virtual reality. Now, when we speak of virtual reality, this is already a type of abstraction. This is a type of abstraction completely detached from real life reality, meaning this is not the real world, okay? This is the digital reality, the virtual reality, okay? Of course, we are using the internet here, and you are granted the freedom to explore open worlds using a custom-made character, just like uh, the games, perhaps, on PSP that you, you play or whatnot. And then you have the concept of hyperreality. Now, hyperreality is more than anything an abstraction, okay? It is a state of mind. This is the inability to distinguish the real from the otherwise, from the unreal. This is a utopia of the mind where people exist as the best version of themselves. And we say that in this sense, the, the people has no ability to distinguish the real from the otherwise. Then that means you have already or the person has already blurred the lines between reality and the unreality of life. Okay, this is quite disturbing and worrisome because there is a lot of people right now who are living in the hyper reality of things. According to 
Irving Goffman. Okay, choose your cell presentations carefully. For what starts out as a mask may become your face. Okay, and later on we will be considering the concepts presented by Irving Goffman. Now, let's talk about the cyber self. When we speak of the cyber self, this is the identity in many ways interrelated with performativity. Okay, you 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 have a performance. The way you present yourself in the cyberspace in the digital world is your cyber self. Of course, we have the use of technology for all its faults, okay, because definitely this is an immoral creation of man. It's neither right nor wrong. It all depends on how you use it. And technology has provided us with new venues for forging identities and personhoods, whether these identities are real in our self-presentation or they are not really part of our real self. Now, in short, our lives online resolve, revolve around the concept of performance. Now, Irving Goffman in his book, The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life, talks about the cyber self. And this is all about participating online, which is equivalent to performing in a crowd. Irving Goffman's landmark book, The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life, he analogizes the nuances of social interaction with those of the theater. Now, this book tells us of socialization as heavily oriented, heavily role oriented, with individuals being assigned specific ones to portray. And that is how we present ourselves in the cyberspace. It is heavily role oriented. It all depends on what kind of person you are trying to present yourself to be with the people online on how you want them to look at you. And this could be far from who you really are in the real world because it's all about how you try to present yourself and how you want other people to think of you in the cyber self. Irving Goffman says that the, all the world's a stage and all men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts and that's very much true right the, the world is a stage and we are all performers of it and there's a lot of um of identities that we could actually forge okay in presenting ourselves online now Irving goffman also spoke about the dramaturgical approach or the dramaturgy of the self in which he meant social interaction as in theatrical performances as has the front stage the backstage and offstage regions. And when we talk about the front stage, it speaks of the performer's consciousness of an audience's perform impacts. Okay? Performer's consciousness of an audience's expectations impacts the performance. So it's all about you perform depending on the expectation of the people you you what you socialize with in the digital world you interact with in the digital world because your expectation okay is very much important in your performance that is the front stage at least in the dramaturgy of the self and then you have the backstage where the performer can relax and be himself or herself this is when you try to close and shut out your uh, digital self or your cyber self because you are very much away from and consciously so you are very much aware you are away from okay the expectations of the people in the cyberspace and then you have the backstage where the okay and then you have the offstage this is where the performer gets to meet members of the audience completely separate from his or her performance so this is when you find yourself mingling or interacting with the people apart from the digital world. This is when you try to understand the real you again because this is where the reality of life happens. Now, Irving Goffman also added people when engaged in social interactions internalize what he calls impression management. And impression management in the digital world is very much important for many people right now living in the digital age because they are very much cautious of what people might think of them in anything that they post perhaps or they share online. Now, when we talk about impression management, this is a process where each attempt 
or in each attempt, okay, to manufacture and present oneself positively to avoid embarrassment. And that's the reason why whenever we try to present our uh, selves online, we don't want to post things that could actually embarrass us. That's the reason why we try to manufacture the real self and present in the unreality of it all because we do not want to be embarrassed. We do not want people to laugh at us. That's the reason why for most often we try to present the perfect us perhaps or the people, the, the, the kind of identity that people will accept, okay? Again, um, we have lived in a world where our validation is very much dependent on the likes, on the shares, or or of the comments that we get on the posts that we share in, our, in the digital media platforms that we do have. But that's the problem, okay? When our identity is very much caught up in the digital presentation of who we are, that we forget the reality of life is separate from the digital world, that we have to interact with people in the reality of it all, inclusive of the tangibility of the things. We, can, we have to sense and, and know people for who they are, for what they are, the, the, the verbal ideas and the nonverbal cues that even they present in the real world. But that's the problem right now because the, there has been a blurred line between the reality and the unreality of life. And the, the generation at the moment has succumbed to that idea that the real world and the unreal world are one and the same thing. But the reality is it is not. Okay? We try to present who we are perfectly so for most, okay, in the digital world irregardless of what people in the real world could actually think of, okay? And that has become the problem at the moment. Now, let's look at the elements of the dramaturgical self. The first one is performance, and this refers to the set of activities in which the self participates in front of the other. So you talk about the, the audience, okay, in front of an audience. So through a performance, people are able to express meaning about themselves in their present situations, whether it be, a, say, for example, a picture, a post, okay, or a video that you post online. That, that is actually called as a performance where you try to um, present yourself in front of an audience and that audience per se could be your friends on, on Facebook, on, on Twitter, or on Instagram, or whatever social media platforms that you do have. And then you have the concept of the setting. And these centers on the scenery where an interaction will take place. It all depends on what digital media platforms that you are using at the moment. The actor or the person needs always to consider altering his or her performance to fit the needs of the setting. That's why you try to what? You try to alter, you try to to adjust, you try to edit your pictures, your videos, and whatnot, okay, depending on the digital media platform that you are using. And then you have the appearance. The function of appearance rests mainly on its ability to portray the self's various statuses, okay? So whatever social media platforms that you are using, you are trying to make sure that your appearance will actually, what, okay, that will actually be presented well. Okay, your your cyber self will be presented well on the platform that you are using. Now on social media, display pictures or often what we call as selfies and cover photos embody these elements because the cover photos or the selfies, okay, these actually portray the kind of status that you want to appear, okay, in the digital world whether it be in your friends in the digital world, and sometimes many of them are people that you do not even know, okay? And then you have the manner. This pertains to how an actor sends various signals to the audience to ultimately inform them in advance of the role he or she seeks or is about to perform. Now, people's manners should merely function closely with their self-presentation, okay? Whether it be in the physical world or in the virtual world, lest they be misread, lest they be misinterpreted, 
or lest they, mis they may be misconstrued by the people around them. And that's the problem when there is a misinterpretation of the person because who he or she is in the real world definitely is so far-fetched from who he or she is presenting in the cyber space. And then you have the front stage, okay, which works as a kind of social script that actors follow for a more guided performance. And remember that 90% of what you see online is not true. Now, this defines a particular encounter or interaction for an audience. That's the reason why whenever you present yourself in the digital world, you always think of what would my cyber, quote unquote, cyber friends think of if I present myself these or that way, okay? Now, Jason Cranford said that anonymity in the virtual landscape is much different than in real life. And this is true, okay? Anonymity in the virtual landscape is much different than in real life. And this is something that we have to understand. That there is a lot of things that we have to understand and somehow our self-presentation has become so separate from who we are that somehow we forget who we are as well. We tend to disregard even the real ass in order for us to be accepted, in order for us to be presented well okay by those in the cyberspace and that wraps up at least our discussion on digital, digital self again this is ss031 understanding the self and this has been sir e your online facilitator your instructor for ss031 thank you very much for joining me today have a good day